your novels, the old ones I've read, is the fact that a lot of them are science fiction is almost secondary to the main plots behind them, like the themes and stories behind it? That's a very interesting point. My first five or six novels were Far Future, Spaceships and Aliens, uh, or Time Travel, classic science fiction stuff. And in Canada, where I live, I was getting reviewed in the national newspapers, and they were glowing reviews. But nobody who wasn't a hardcore science fiction fan was reading them. Right. So I decided I would move my stuff to the near future or present day. I realized I could do all the things that I felt were important to do in science fiction. All the philosophical stuff, mm-hmm. all the speculative stuff, all the satirical stuff, mm-hmm. perhaps even more poignantly in the near future or the present day. And I started with uh, my sixth novel, The Terminal Experiment, oh, doing yes. that. Uh-huh. It went on to win the Nebula Award. Award yeah. from the Science Fiction Fantasy Writers of America, but it also set a template for all my future novels that if I did that, I didn't lose a single science fiction reader. In fact, that novel was no, serialized prior to publication in Analog, which is the oh, bastion yeah. of hard <laughs> SF, right? Yeah. And yet, uh, I didn't lose any of those readers, but I gained a very large audience of mainstream readers. Well, this is the beauty of it. As a science fiction writer, absolutely. I've done science fiction courtroom drama. I've done Mm -hmm. science fiction mystery. I've done science fiction thriller. I've done science fiction romance. I've done uh, science fiction political novel. Uh, uh, You can do science fiction plus anything and not alienate the science fiction audience. The flip side is not true. You do a mystery and then add some science fiction, you lose almost all of your audience, right? So the science fiction reader understands that the canvas is all of space, all of time, all forms of life. That lets you tell a very broad palette of stories. You look at, just to make it down to an example everybody can understand, the original Star Trek Mm -hmm. TV series from the 60s. There were out-and-out comedy episodes, The Trouble with Tribbles. There were uh, uh, political allegories, let that be your last battlefield, the half-white, half-black people. There were real thriller adventure stories like uh, um, The Doomsday Machine, right? There were poignant love stories like City on the Edge of Forever. Now you try and name any cop show, any romance show, any show in any other category that had such a broad range of stories in the 60s through to today, and you can't find it. But in science fiction, you can do almost anything and uh, and, uh, appeal to my taste as a writer. So I've never even liked the term science fiction. Now, there is a lot of science in my books, but there's a lot of science in Michael Crichton's books. And if you watch CSI, it is all science. It's forensic science, but it's science, right? Uh, There's a lot of science, but I've actually always preferred the term philosophical fiction to science fiction. So instead of sci-fi, it'd be (laughs) fi-fi. And uh, because it's the literature of ideas, it's saying, what if, asking, I like, what I like to say is that science fiction is a laboratory for thought experiments about the human condition that would be illegal, unethical, Mm -hmm. or impractical to conduct in real life. Right, so, we had the Flash Forward TV series on Flash ABC. One, uh, we have two others in the works right now, but when I say in the works, I've had two or three others in the works periodically <laughs> before. I do not count the chickens before they are hatched, but uh, there's an adaptation uh, being uh, prepared right now of my novel Roll Back, uh, which is about rejuvenation and the impact that uh, being young again, not just halting aging, but actually uh, uh, reversing aging, and also my trilogy Wake watch and wonder about the World Wide Web gaining consciousness is also in development right now. I just had a meeting last week with the woman who's writing the pilot uh, for um, for rollback, and uh, as soon as I get back from Dragon Con, I'm meeting with the woman we've selected to be our uh, showrunner for Wake Watch and oh, Wonder. Okay. So it's all very cool. Well, so how's that experience to actually see something you've written kind of brought to a different? Well, I always insist on being involved. So I, because you need a name director and a name showrunner and a name writing the pilot. Mm-hmm. I'm a name in books, but I'm not a name in television, even though I've been a Writers Guild of America member for years, Writers Guild of Canada member for over 30 years now. Uh, Nonetheless, you gotta get a name. But I'm always attached to write for the project. And my attitude, I'll sum it up very quickly because we're running out of time here. I said to David Goyer, who was our showrunner on Flash Forward, 
David, I will never say to you, that's not the way it was in my book. But I'll go medieval on your ass if you do something in episode seven that contradicts what you did in episode four. That's my approach. It's a different medium, and right. you do the best expression of that philosophical notion that you possibly can in the medium you're working in. 70s, yes, it was The Six Million Dollar Man. The pilot film for The Six Million Dollar Man is perfect example of what I'm talking about. It was nominated for Hugo, lost to Woody Allen's Sleeper, but it was just at the beginning of our revolution in automation. It was asking the question, how much of your humanity can you lose and still be human? Anybody who just remembers Steve Austin fighting Bigfoot or something like that, which was fun, <laughs> go back, get the pilot film, it's included on the first season DVD, and the DVD is, is usually under 10 bucks. Yeah. Get it, watch it, and you will see this wonderful exploration of exactly the kind of stuff that I loved in science fiction. What it meant to piece by piece lose your physical humanity, could you remain spiritually, emotionally, uh, intellectually a human being in the face of that? The Six Million Dollar Man, based on, by the way, a novel by Martin Caden. The novel was called oh. Cyborg. It was on ABC, premiered in 73. And one of the things that was a thrill for me, the Flash Forward TV series, we were also on ABC, science fiction show based on a novel, and it was my novel in that case. Nice. Thanks so much. Don't you know that you're a grown up? Subscribe to Gen X Grown Up by clicking right here and enable notifications so you won't miss a thing. Use the comments down below to tell us what you think, and while you're there, a thumbs up would be great too. Please share this online wherever you hang out. Connect with GXG on social networks by clicking right here. Basically, life sucks as a grown up.